Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Open your Bibles with me tonight to 2 Peter. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Second Peter chapter one, the first four verses. Simon Peter, a servant. Now, the Greek word there for servant is slave. You can look that up in the New Living Testament. That's the way it reads. Simon Peter, a slave and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, now just wait a minute. Just hold it a second. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us. You mean to tell me that we have the same faith as this great apostle? I mean, this is the man that by revelation, Simon Barjona, fisherman, but who do you say that I am? And he just stood up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And that day, Jesus changed his name to the rock. You're solid as a rock. Amen. Yep. Well, all right. Now just hold your place there and let's go over to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you, we've, been, we've, we've been through chapter 11, and there's the hall of fame, of faith. But you come down to the 39th verse, and all these having obtained a good report through faith, through faith, say through faith, I've had people tell me, Copeland, you're overbearing on faith. No, I'm just doing my job. Some people are glory specialists, and that's good. Some people are healing specialists, and that's marvelous and wonderful. But the Lord let me know early on that I'm to be a faith specialist. I'm to study it, understand it, and walk by it and, 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 and praise for it, look for it in everything. Look for faith in everything. Look for it everywhere I look. I want to see faith. Glory to God. Amen. So, wherefore, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect or mature. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. If you'll look up the word cloud there, other translations translate it a crowd, a crowd, a huge crowd of witnesses. And he was referring to the ones he just named. I just wrote, just finished my February partner letter on this subject. And I have to include Oral Roberts, Kenneth E. Hagan, praise God, 
T.L. Osborne, T.L. Lowry, Smith Wigglesworth, the apostle of faith, all of, all of these men, and Amy McPherson, glory to God, Marie Woodworth Edder, oh, apostles of faith. Amen. Amen. So these are the great crowd, the great cloud of witnesses. And these are the ones. Now, there are people in heaven. Um, uh, Jesse Duplantis just recently went back through his vision uh, of, of, of heaven, the time he spent there. And he saw people there that just had on white gowns, no reward at all. But <laughs> thank God they're there. No reward at all. But this group and the ones of this caliber are part and have to do with, how can I say this, Lord? They're, they are, they are God's future planning committee because God doesn't do anything without first he talks with his servants, the prophets, or in this case, the witnesses. They're witnesses. And they are the ones that stood tall in the midst of great persecution and warfare. Now, we haven't had that kind of persecution as, as a lot of them have. But thank God, I just thank God I'm, I, I'm going to have a little more than just a white gown on. <laughs> I want to be, be a part of this group. And Jesus tarries. I've only got about 34 more years. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best to work up, you know, work up to that place. So, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, say us, us. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience or endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher or the developer or the completer of our faith. That's where Peter got his faith. That's where John got his faith. That's where you got your faith. I'll prove it. Go over to the 11th chapter of Mark. Some Bibles will just fall open there. Mark chapter 11. Now we can say this. In the fact that uh, Mark brings these things out so bluntly and to the point this, in my opinion, could have been labeled the gospel according to Peter. Because Peter mentions John Mark as his spiritual son. Amen. So you can see all of these things. But now look here at the 11th chapter. And the uh, 22nd verse, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. I have a little number two there. Or have the faith of God. It's God's faith and it's precious. Priceless. Now let's go over. Let's go back over to 2 Peter. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power has given unto us all things. Say all things. All things. Uh, this is all things for 2022. This is all things for 2032, 52, 52, all things. I don't care where you are or what you're faced with. All things. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now, the old English word virtue just simply means excellence here. And you know, no, nobody uses that word. It's, it's, it's a good word. But, but anyway, in this case, excellence. Now listen, here's what I want to talk to you about. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through human desires. Exceeding great and precious promises. Why are they precious promises? It cost Jesus his life to ratify these. It took a blood covenant. Exceeding, say it with me, exceeding great and precious promises. All right. Now, let's hold your place there and let's turn over to the book of Isaiah first chapter. This book, this, the, this book of covenants, it doesn't pull any punches. It is a book of correction. It is a book of direction. Amen. It is a book of protection. It is a book of perfection or completeness. And we're going into a year like that. There's going to be a lot of uh, wide swings, extremes coming up this year. Extremely good things for some people, extremely bad things for others. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. So, okay, stop that. That's a correction. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Now, if you say that to most Christian people, seek judgment. Oh, no, I don't want judgment. Yes, you do. Let's get it now. Instead of waiting till later. Get it over with. Glory to God. And the scripture says the night that, that uh, Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, said, this is my body broken for you. Then he took the cup and said, this is my, 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 the blood of the new covenant. And then he kept, he, he kept, then through the great apostle Paul, he kept on and he said, now judge yourself. 
that you be not judged. Jesus had to stand judgment before the Almighty God after he was raised from the dead and he was judged good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, now stay with me now. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, oh, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured but with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Verse 25, I will turn my hand. Now let's go on down read. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness, lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver has become dross and wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves gifts and follow or bribes and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither does the cause the widow to come the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the angelic armies of God. the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross or thy alloy and take away all thy sin and I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors or thy lawyers as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. That is a word to the United States. I will replace your bad judges. Now did you notice he didn't say I'll replace your king. He said I'll replace the judges. We live under more pressure from judges. I mean, even local judges can really help or really mess things up. Just depends on where their heart is. But we have something to say about that. We can, fo we can follow this and, and lay hold and lay claim to this all throughout this year where judges are concerned. Amen. Amen. So, I will restore your judges as at the first and your lawyers at the, at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. What, what did I just read? Exceeding great and precious promises. If you're willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. And I brought that up to the Lord one day. And I said, Lord, I just, you know, I, I just, I, I, I'm, now listen to me now. You said if I be willing and obedient, I'll eat the good of the land. And the ministry was having some financial situation. And, and he said, you don't qualify for that. Uh-oh. What? He said, ever since I told you to do daily television, you haven't had anything good to say about it. You were obedient, but you were not willing. Well, it didn't take you very long to get willing. <laughs> I just had a change of heart. <laughs> I said, I'm willing. Well, and I'll tell you another thing that shook me up and he took me back over here to the curse And, 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 he, and he took me back over and I was familiar with this. He said, brought me up here and said, in the 
moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake you till you be destroyed because you serve not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. I said, oh, dear God. What I have, I got corrected. So, I started saying it. I love daily television. <laughs> I love daily television. I love daily television. And I said it, and then I went over here to Exodus 23, 25. There's, a, there's misunderstanding here about this. And the way most people read it doesn't make any sense. And uh, you have to come back to verse 20 to understand it. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in your way and bring thee unto the place where I have prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, nor my, for my name is in him. Then he comes down and said, you shall serve the Lord your God, and he, the angel, shall bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. That's the proper way to read that. I put in there, and you shall serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Amen. I was corrected with an exceeding precious promise. The length of your days I will fulfill. And that promise was under the blood covenant of God and Abram. So, where do we need to go now? 17th chapter of Genesis. Of course we do. Thank you, Lord. When Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am El Shaddai. I am the God that's more than enough. Uh, he appeared to him and said, I am the God that's more than enough. I will make my covenant between me and thee. The greater making covenant with the lesser. And will multiply thee, what? exceedingly because it's an exceeding great and precious promise. I will. Can't you hear God? I promise you I will. I will make my covenant between me and thee and I will multiply thee exceedingly and Abraham, I mean Abram fell on his face and God talked with him and saying, as for me, behold, look, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name be more called Abram, but thou, thy name shall be Abraham. The H. Now, what does that H, what is that H? Hashem. In Hebrew, the name. This is the first record of a name change in a covenant. They were joined together in a covenant of blood and they became one. The greater entered into covenant with the lesser. And that's what covenant does. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now.
Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. God's divine power has given you everything you need for a godly life. He's given you His exceeding great and precious promises. So how do you go from believing it to receiving those promises into your life? In Kenneth Copeland's teaching, Precious Faith, Precious Promises, learn how God wants to walk you through aligning with His perfect will for your life. Choose to yield to His correction so you can go in the direction He leads you. When you're following His direction, you're able to receive His protection. Let God's love and mercy flow through you and see God's perfection touch every area of your life. Spirit, soul, body, finances, everything. Find out how He's already put His own faith inside you. In fact, the covenant of grace you have with God gives you access to all He has. Learn to use your God-given faith Get in His Word and receive the exceeding great and precious promises that He has for you. Request your free copy of Precious Faith, Precious Promises by Kenneth Copeland, available on DVD or MP3. Discover the number one key to answered prayer and how to go from expectancy to ownership. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. Free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Brother Copeland did a tremendous job of preaching at our Victory First Conference. We learned about the exceeding great and precious promises that God has given to us. We also learned how the scriptures provide us with correction that will position us to receive. What an exciting week of broadcast. Be sure to download the free study notes that go along with it. They include all the scriptures and Brother Copeland's key points. Now to download your free copy, go to kcm.org slash notes. Now the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine is our free monthly publication. We send it to partners and friends all over the world. And since 1973, each edition has brought the good news of the gospel to help people grow and experience victory. Build your faith with instruction from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest ministers. And there are also amazing testimonies that will inspire you to believe God for your miracle. Now to request your free subscription, go to kcm.org. Now tomorrow, Brother Copeland is going to be teaching us more about God's exceeding great and precious promises. This series that he's done just was absolutely revolutionary. You need to stay with it. Well, until then, we want you to know that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on The Believer's Voice of Victory. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want you to be victorious in life. Go to kcm.org.uk for free ministry resources and teaching tools to help you grow in faith and live in the blessing of the Lord. Stay connected with us through our website and all of our social channels to help us keep you informed and up to date on ministry outreaches, upcoming events, and specials that are available to you.